Hello, fellow risk takers, and welcome to my worst investment ever. Stories of loss to keep you winning. In our community, we know that to win in investing, you must take risk, but to win big, you've got to reduce it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm on a mission to help 1 million people reduce risk in their lives. To reduce risk in your life, go to myworstinvestmentever.com today and take the risk reduction assessment I created from the lessons I've learned from more than 500 guests. Fellow risk takers, this is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stotts from A. Stotts Academy, and I'm here with featured guest, Anna Malik and Anna, are you ready to join the mission? Yes. I am excited to have you on and I want to introduce you to the audience. Anna is an optimist who had to overcome two bouts with cancer to learn that pursuing happiness is a fallacy. To choose happiness is a much more powerful strategy to tap into our highest human potential either by working with leaders and their teams or other coaches and consultants. Anna supports her clients to break through their mindset limitations and upgrade their psychological operating systems so that they achieve better results than ever in work and in life while enjoying the process. Anna, take a minute and tell us about the value that you bring to this wonderful world. At my core, I'm a learner. I love to learn. And one of the best ways of learning is to teach. So my gift to the world, world is being a good teacher because I love to learn. Mm. That's, that's interesting because I think we have that same thing in common. You know, it's, I remember I started teaching finance 30 years ago and I was like, I know nothing. And I just felt like I had to, I had to study hard. I had to work hard, even though I had studied the topic. And now as I look back and think about all that I know, I just feel sad for those students that were learning from me 30 years ago, because I just <laughs> didn't know. But I had a lady that came up to me, um, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago that said, you were the best teacher I ever had. I was like, I knew nothing. And so I really respect the journey and what we learn in the journey. Absolutely. And uh, as a student, and I was a good student, we learned a lot uh, and we have to take responsibility and agency in our own learning, in my opinion. But when I start uh, in my professional career as a teacher in a university, uh, then is when I realized that the ideas could not be just, oh, I get this. I really had to understand the back and forward, the inside out, because there was that question oh okay i never thought about that way and connecting the dots and trying to find the patterns and that i find wonderful and fascinating yeah it's it's interesting because i remember i was so terrified by getting questions that i didn't know the answer to and but i learned early on i would just ask the student you know well, what do you think mm -hmm. <laughs> you're asking the question, what do you think the answer is? I don't know. Let's talk about it. And uh, I think that I'm, I'm certainly more comfortable doing that now, but I know that was kind of an only way out sometimes when I just really needed to think something through more and see more examples. I, I learned through examples. So my next question for you is, how do you learn? I love uh, reading. I love listening. And, and seeing visual. I'm very visual in terms of organizing the information. Uh, but I was telling to a friend the other day that uh, a publishing house must have my photo somewhere in their boards because I'm the person that if I heard about a book or about the topic, I go and get the book in audio format and will be listening to it while I'm doing other things. Then if I really like the book, I will get it in that same book in the Kindle because then I can annotate and uh, find things. And if I really like it, I will get it in the really the physical book and in hardcover if there is that version because I like the kinesthetic sensation of the book and I like to make the notation to put the little uh, my post-its and tabs because then if I need to go back visually, I know where the information is and allow me to go really deep into it. So I buy, 
I can I have many books that I have the three formats and I can take a step further because if I ever have the opportunity of having that book signed by the author, I will be getting at that signature. That is interesting. In fact, I was just thinking if you went back and told my father 30, 40 years ago, Dad, you know what? In the future, people are going to buy the same book three times. He's like, are they going to lose their memory? They don't even remember that they had that book. Nope, they're going to buy it in three different formats. That would just be unbelievable. But I know the feeling. I've done the same exact thing. So now let me ask you, I, I had two questions that I wanted to ask before we get into the big question. The first is, what type of people do you serve? Like, what type of people come to you for your services? And the second thing is, like, what do they get from that? And maybe you can share kind of your uh you know, what you've learned or some tips that, that you've gained over the years? Uh, I really love to work with people that are in a mission to make a difference out there, creating a positive impact. Uh, and it's my own way, because I'm also in that mission, and it's my w own way of creating the ripple effect uh, that my action can uh, aff uh, affect in a positive way another person that will affect many other people. So in that category, I love to work with coaches and consultants that are there in a mission to help uh, mainly executive and leadership coaches that work with organizations. And uh, now I'm also bringing, directly working with um, small business to big business in terms of the mindset work uh, uh, really, um, for the coach and consultant with their own business that own their own business, a lot of the challenge that they face, they have to learn how to overcome by doing some personal development work. And I think that principle affects everybody. So if you are working as a leader in organization or as a team member in organization or in the factory floor in, in any manufacturing company, you can learn about yourself and how to leverage your talents, your strengths to be uh, part of the solution, part of the transformation for everybody. And of course, as higher you go in organization, more responsibilities you have, in, in my opinion, more you have to work in yourself to fine tune what is going on between your two years mm. to be able to leverage uh, all the resources that you have around you. Right. And you are also a podcaster. Maybe you can just yes. tell us that what, what your podcast and also tell us like, what do we get when we go to listen to that podcast? So my podcast is the mindset zone. And as the name says, it is about mindsets. Mm. And the way that I see mindsets is like the, the lenses that we use to understand and see the world around us. And uh, we have different set of glasses to look around us. I follow a lot the work of Dr. Carol Dweck uh, on mind or grow mindset and fix mindset. But the main, the main thing about my podcast that I try with my solo episodes and my interviews I want that at the end of the half an hour that people are listening, they, mm, I never thought about this this way. I see more possibilities. Mm. That is my thing there. Uh, help us to create a space because everybody speaks about mindsets, mainly yeah. in the coaching world. It's mindset. You have to work your mindset. But how do we work our mindset? Where is mm. the gym that we go to? to exercise our mindset, to be to allow it to become more flexible by listening to other people having interesting conversations. That is a way of exercising our mindset yep. by deconstructing a concept, breaking things down and then putting everything together again is a way of exercising our mindsets. So that is my mission in the mindset zone. That's exciting. I'm just looking at um... I was listening to your recent one, Peripheral Thinking with Paul Daniels, Ooh, but yes. I've just seen that um, you have, um, I don't know how to pronounce her last name properly, Gina Bianchini. 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 And she's, is she the one that, that came up with Mighty Networks? Is that? Yes. She's okay. the CEO and founder of Mighty Networks. That's All the one I'm going to listen to. 
That's the one I want to listen to because I've built um, online communities and I, I th I've, I've downloaded Mighty Networks and I'd love to, to, to learn more. So ladies and gentlemen, go and listen to the Mindset Zone and I'll have links to that in the, in the uh, show notes. Well, now, Anna, it's time to share your worst investment ever and since no one goes into their worst investment thinking it will be, tell us a bit about the circumstances leading up to it and then tell us your story. So... It was in the beginning of my online business adventure. So I, like so many coaches and consultants, coaching was not my first life professionally. I start uh, back in Portugal, that is my country of origin, teaching in a university or several universities and uh, having my private practice as a psychotherapy. My background is psychology. I was a clinical psychologist at the time. And so that was working. Uh, and I had an entrepreneurial spirit, I, uh, trainings and organizing things and entrepreneurial within the organization. I led many initiatives there. But then by reasons of the art, I moved here to the United States and I had to reinvent myself professionally. And I decided to become a, a, a life coach and a coach. I start as a life coach. And uh, uh, I was having, starting a family. My daughter was young. So I was wanting to have an online business and okay, how can I make it? There are people out there that are making this work. I can find the formula and the system to make this work. So I was, but honestly, in the beginning, I was just uh, throwing spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. And one of the things so I did, there are two things that I think um, I think backwards and I say, how did I do this? When I was contacted, so I did my website, I had to start to and hoping that people will find the website. And the first people that find you whenever you are online are not clients, but are other salespeople. <laughs> so uh, somebody contact me with this great, um, and we are speaking uh, in 2009, 2010, but was, it's going to be the next Google. And we have to give some context here because I'm from a generation, I, I remember the Alta Vista. Mm. I remember Yahoo. That was the, the big thing that everybody will be or, and then Google when you start and all of that. So I knew that these things, why is Google's going to be from so many years around? I had seen others come and go. Right. So uh, they show me this great, and there was pictures on the, that search engine that, that was really cool and well done, and they did me a demo. And if you invest now in a placement, then we'll secure the placement always there. So if people are looking for a life coach, you show up in the top, and I say, oh, if I show up in the top, I'm going to have all the business in the world. So I s sign up to them. I put money down and I, oh gosh this is going to be great mm. uh, and, and um, any business came from that none <laughs> the, the, they were and they just disappear in the internet not how they say I think they were was not a hoax nothing like that they really were trying to make their thing the next big thing, but they were not the next big thing. And mm -hmm. I was looking to the investment with no return. And I say, what, why, why? And the same happened again, another people contact me online about, oh, uh, if you uh, write a book and you have a book out that they will position yourself as an expert, allow you to get clients. Uh, and this can be very easy. We just interview you. And then uh, we put everything together and it's a chapter on the book and in the cover you can have your photo and you can buy how many copies do you have, want. So I thought, okay, why not? So bought that, put more money out and they, they, they fulfilled their promise. They interviewed, they transformed in a nice chapter. But then when I received the book and the book had a good uh, presence, but then I didn't realize that the people that were in the book, the quality was not the quality that I want to be associated with. Mm -hmm. So the books stay in a box or the books stay in a box and they are still in a box somewhere <laughs> in storage here in the house. And that I was, uh, Anna, 
come on, you could have thought this through and they'd ask more questions and all that kind of uh, regret kind of thinking that happened after a bad investment. Mm. Uh, it's interesting too, like when we're starting out, I know in my own business, we're trying to find client. We're trying to find, you know, the ways to reach the market. Let's just say that we've got something good that we want to bring out there, but it's so hard. And I tell young students and my interns and other people that work with me, is that finance is easy. I mean, it's numbers and calculations and all that, but marketing is hard. I'm just curious, like, um, how you felt when you realized, you know, I, I guess the first thing I want to think about is just how you were feeling when you signed up for this. Because I think that a lot of people out there listening probably are feeling that same way right now and they're looking for answers. Yeah, when I signed up, it was a hopeful feeling. I was hoping and I, I really, okay, this is the thing that will make the difference. And yes, I'm going to invest on this. This is an investment uh, in order to be in front of more people and if people see me they uh, because i was having success with people that i knew in person in my mm. sphere of influence and I, I was having clients that way but i was in, expanding more online and i thought okay if people find me if they are looking for a life coach and they type life coach and i show up there they are going to check me out and fall in love with me come on, I'm good on what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, or if they, if I have a book, then I can leverage the book and they read that and they are going to resonate with it and uh, become a client. Mm. But I, I really was naive, not understanding that that things doesn't mean that they have value and marketing has value, but uh, it's just the starting of the process. Mm. So how would you summarize the lessons that you've learned? Uh, the big lesson is marketing does not get you clients. Uh, and I like to repeat when I speak about this, marketing does not get you clients. Yes, you have to, because really what marketing is, is a way of creating awareness. Mm. You are, people become aware that you exist and that you have something to offer. And that is absolutely essential, but is not enough for somebody to become one of your clients. If they don't know that you exist, they are never going to consider you as somebody that can support them. If they know that you exist, but they don't have any idea about what you do, possibly they don't know that what you do can help them solve a problem. So they have to know that you exist. They have to be clear about what you do. And then has to be, oh, you help people like me get the results that I'm trying. So, but that is essential, but not enough to get the client because after that, they are going to check your foundation. If, uh, if they feel that there is resonance, if they feel that you are trustworthy, and then they give you opportunity to build more trust. And if you have a system to build trust, then is when you can create the opportunity to have the conversation about their goals and about how you can help them to achieve their goals. That can lead to a client, the partnership of, mm. okay, I can help you arrive to where you want to go. Uh, but it's a process. It's not mm. that this is building relationships. Uh, and uh, we are not dealing with a commodity. I want a pen, let me look a pen with certain characteristics. Oh, this one is a good price, let me get. If we are speaking about services, it's a little bit more complex. And once in a while, a person is going to know about us and know that we can help people like them and it's really urgent and they go very quickly to that process, but mm. they still go to the process. Um, well, maybe I'll summarize. I mean, the, the, from what I took away, I think the biggest one is you just like slap me in the face, basically, by saying that marketing doesn't get you clients. And it made me just think, and I think for the listeners out there, you know, what are you saying? You know, I mean, I thought marketing gets me clients, but what you're telling me is that marketing is an essential step. But if I, if I think that just doing marketing is going to bring me clients, I, I'm going to fail. 
And, Absolutely. And I'm also thinking about, you know, it made me think while you were speaking about the difference between sales and marketing, you know, and there is a process, there's a sales process, you know, which is guiding a customer through that buying process. And that's different from marketing. And sometimes it's, it's, it's just much more fun to do the marketing, you know, like write the text and all that. But reaching the market and guiding them through that journey of, you know, building no like and trust is a whole different thing. So um, I, I tell you a story. I have a, a group of interns that from university that are working at my home office here. And they're working on helping me with my marketing, my valuation masterclass boot camp. Young people, they... But you know what they always go back to is marketing. They always go back to, let's make a new graphic. Let's make more text. Let's do this. But then what, what I'm going to tell them after this call uh, is I'm going to walk out there and I'm going to tell them that a very wise person said to me today that marketing doesn't bring you clients. And I'm going to ask them to think about that. What does it mean? And I think for the listeners, this is a valuable lesson. And has to do a lot about, and I work a lot with coaches and uh, is we are very giving and the marketing, you can give amazing content, amazing information, build things. It's beautiful. It's a giving kind of giving content, create content, become people. The problem, we have to balance that. If there is a bridge from the moment that somebody knows us to the moment that they buy from us, becoming a client, how do we bridge that gap? If there is that gap, how do we create a bridge there. And there's a lot to do with giving activities, marketing activities, making aware of what we have to offer. And at the same time, we have to ask to. And ask is the sale. So, okay, how can we make this happen? And if it's unbalanced, the bridge, loads of giving and no asking, it becomes like a, a, a inclined plan that nobody's going to cross that bridge. Mm. If the other way around, you have also examples in social media mainly that they even they don't say hello. They say, do you want to buy from me? Uh, so there is no nurturing, no giving. It's just, okay, I'm going to ask. And it's a numbers game. I'm going to ask a thousand people. One maybe will buy from me. So how do we balance these two things? Doing mm. marketing to create awareness, but also ask. Ask for opportunities to have a sales conversation and and like you were saying in a big organization they have a marketing department and they have a sales department mm. we need both yep valuable it reminded me of a story when i was um, maybe 30 or so i went to my father my father took me to his university uh cornell in this case and uh, there was a big uh, anniversary for students and he was telling me the story of one of his friends he says i had a friend in university and Every girl he met, he said, would you like to sleep with me tonight? And my dad said, 99 women said no. But one said yes. <laughs> and it was kind of like, you know, it was not the normal style of doing it. We want to attract people. We want to use marketing. We don't go out and just ask people, bye, 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 get this, you know, you know, send your money and I think that that what you're talking about is that balance and it just really made me think a lot you know in my own business how much am I giving how much am I asking and how is that balance so let me ask you another question I want to think about a young man or woman out there that they've got a product service they're they're trying to expand you know they're struggling they need those revenue out there so they they can't not engage but based upon what you learn from this story and what you continue to learn, what one action would you recommend our listeners take to avoid suffering the same fate? Don't uh, wait for people to uh, come and say, oh, I want to work with you. Create opportunities to have conversations. Mm. Uh, and not all the conversations are not going to result in clients, but just get used to start conversations, bring people on the phone, bring people on Zoom and learn about them. And if you ever can help them, the, say it. I think what I do can help you arrive, uh, help you achieve your goals. And Great. a percentage of them will become clients. Great advice. So what is a resource that you'd recommend for our listeners? 
I will recommend the Mindset Zone podcast mm. <laughs> as a great way of uh, expanding your possibilities and uh, just uh, check the episodes there and see if there is some topic that is relevant will mm. be the first place to, to start. Fantastic. Well, last question. What is your number one goal for the next 12 months? Interesting enough is writing a book. I spoke about the, my worst thing the being the book chapter, but now 10 years after that, I'm in a place that writing a book makes sense because I know what I want to say. And I know that I have to have a plan to marketing and sell the book. <laughs> That's great. I think you're in a good spot for that. I remember when I pressed publish of my first book on Amazon, I thought, all right, that's it. I'm done. And what I realized was that, oh, no, actually, I'm just starting the whole marketing process. So, well, we're looking, we'll look forward to, to seeing that book and, and reading it and learning more from what's in your head. Well, listeners, there you have it. Another story of loss to keep you winning. If you haven't yet taken the risk reduction assessment, I challenge you to go to myworstinvestmentever.com right now and start building wealth the easy way by reducing risk. As we conclude, and I want to thank you again for coming on the show and joining our mission. And on behalf of A Stotts Academy, I hereby award you alumni status for turning your worst investment ever into your best teaching moment. Do you have any parting words for the audience? Be gentle with yourself and keep moving forward. Fantastic. And that's a wrap on another great story to help us create, grow, and protect our well. Fellow risk takers, let's celebrate that today we added one more person to our mission to help one million people reduce risk in their lives. This is your worst podcast host, Andrew Stott, saying, I'll see you on the upside. <laughs>